Hey, this is Brad. Uh, I sh should probably put a title on this thing, huh? Um, how about limits and continuity with GeoGebra applet support? I think I should have some music? Okay, that's enough of that. Today I'd like to talk about limits and continuity. I'd like to do it using this applet, whose link will be in the description of the video. The slider at the top lets us choose a preset function, and right now the one I have in mind is preset function A, whose graph is shown in green here below. It's a simple step function that takes the value 0 from negative 2 to 0, it takes the value 1 from 0 to 2, and when x equals 0 it takes the value 1, so we, that's indicated by this large dot here. I'd like to evaluate the limit of this function as x approaches 0. So I've put x approaching 0 in this box here, and then this slider here, the accuracy of limit estimate, lets me adjust how good of an estimate we're getting for this function. The, the slider controls how close the, the, these moving blue and red points are to the x value of 0. So the red point here, we have an x value, I don't know, that's maybe negative uh, two-thirds or something. As the estimate gets better, that gets closer and closer to x equals zero. And if we just extrapolate the course of where this red point is going, it appears to be targeted towards this small red point. So it looks like this function is getting closer and closer to this little red point as x approaches zero from the left. At the same time, as x approaches 0 from the right, the blue point is telling us where the function is behaving on that side of things. So, and you can just, you don't need the arrows and the points and all this stuff. You could just do, do this with your fingers, or you could not use any pointers at all and just, just look at it and, and see how you think the function is going to move. But I'm using these pointers here in order to be clear on the screen with what it is that I'm paying attention to. So, uh, as x approaches 0 from the left, it looks like our function value approaches 0, and that's indicated here by the statement, the limit, as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x is approximately 0. I'm saying approximately here because I am using technology to estimate something, and technology often struggles with a lot of these limit and continuity type issues. Uh, but in this case, it's correct. Likewise, from the right-hand side, the blue arrow we could see as we come in along the curve from the right side, we seem to be approaching a y value of 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x is approximately 1. And in green I've indicated that at 0 itself the function takes the value 1. So in this case, I see that the left-hand limit is 0, the right-hand limit is 1. Those two disagree so the two-sided limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, does not exist. If there's no notation involved, like this superscript negative sign or the superscript positive that indicate left and right, in the absence of that kind of notation, you're talking about the two-sided limit. We might also be interested in the behavior of this function at a different x value. So for example, if I were to ask what is this function doing as x approaches 1, I put a 1 here in the x approaches what box, and now we'll play with this uh, accuracy of limit estimate, and here it looks like the left and right limits are both converging to the same point. So the limit from the left is approximately 1, the limit from the right is approximately 1. Uh, those two facts by themselves mean that the limit is 1, but when we throw in the fact that f of 1 is also 1, Right, Three things are meeting there. We've got the left limit, the right limit, and the function value itself. When those three things all agree, that means that our function is continuous at that point. Whereas when we evaluated the same question when x equals 0, this function was discontinuous at 0. You can use this same tool to answer similar questions about limits and continuity for any function you like. Just take your function chooser back to the very the leftmost position and define whatever function you want in there. For example, maybe I'm interested in the sine of x divided by x. Here's an example of a function which uh, is undefined when x equals 0, 
we can see this happening in the green text here, f of 0 is undefined. So when x equals 0, this doesn't make any sense. However, the limit still exists. So for x values getting very close to 0, this function takes a value that is ever closer to 1. So the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit both agree. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is 1.